What you guys, today we're taking a look at the brand new TerraMaster F4424 Pro. This is the very latest uh, four bay NAS from TerraMaster, and it's probably the most powerful NAS on the market today. This is exactly what you're going to get inside the box if you purchase one of these. You've got your stickers here, and you've also got some uh, user manual warranty and things like that inside the box. So if you want to register it, you can do get your warranty. Also, you're going to get your power cable. This is a UK plug, but you'll get one with the country of your choice. Also got your power adapter here. This is the power brick that comes with the actual uh, unit itself. So also we got some screws and these are the actual screws for the drives. So therefore the three and a half inch and also for the two and a half inch drives inside here. And you've got an ethernet cable inside here as well for you. You can add more ethernet cables if you want to, and you get the NAS itself. So let's take a closer look at the NAS itself. This is the four bay NAS from TerraMaster. It's all in black, so they've gone with the black look here. Very easy to remove trays here for your drives. The maximum storage in this one is 18 terabytes times four. You can also use three and a half inch mechanical drives and two and a half inch SSDs inside here as well. You've also got the ability to use different types of raids on this one it is hot swappable which means you can remove the drives when on although i recommend turning the unit off and changing out drives if you need to that way just for more added safety so let's take a look at the actual unit itself you've got some ventilation on the side with that TerraMaster logo brand in here also one on the other side is exactly the same on that side we have the four bays on the front and also on the rear we have this huge intelligent uh, controlled fan here, which ensures optimal working conditions by automatically adjusting the fan speed according to the hard disk temperatures. Moving on to the side panel here, this is where all the power button is to power on the device. That's at the rear here. We also have HDMI 2.1 port on here as well. You're also getting two USB ports on the rear, one type C port, which is a 3.2 port, and also a type A port on there as well, which is also 3.2, which is going to add some more storage. You can plug into this and add more storage to this as well. Although you do have plenty of storage available on here, up to 88 terabytes can be utilized on the four bays at the front. Also got the power port on there and also two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on there, which can also be used in link aggregation to offers a network bandwidth of 5 GB. So moving on the bottom, you can see we've got some ventilation here for anti-slip rubber feet and anti-vibration feet. And on the back here, we've got these two screws which we can remove. And this will give us access to the actual board itself. So we can put in M.2 drives in here as well for caching. So I'm going to remove these two screws and show you basically how easy it is. But first, let me just quickly remove these drive bays here. These are a tallest design here. These are held on with these two little clips here. You just pull these off. And you can see we can put three and a half inch and 2.5 inch drives in here as well. They can be SSDs or mechanical. And we can also easily insert these drives. Let me quickly show you how to do this before I show you the expansion bays at the top for the M.2 drives. So let me go ahead and pull these off here. Pretty simple and easy to do. You can use screws also to hold these in place if you wanted to, but there's real no need once they're in situ. So we'll just populate a couple of drives here today for testing. But basically, this is the actual stick that holds the drives in place. So all I need to do here is slot in the drive. I'm just going to use one of these drives here, push it into the back here. And then what we can do now is push on that holding uh, piece here, which just got one little arrow pointing to the front here. Just need to clip that in. Just need to make sure the drive is just slightly lined up here, and then it should click into position. Then I'll do the same on the other side. Once we clip this into place, the drive should be held in position. Just slot that back into the drive bay here and make sure you click it in position and it's good to go. Next, I'll do the next one here. We just need to slot this in and push it into position. They do have a sequence here. So this is bays three and four and you have bays one and two on the uh, left hand side. So to gain access to the M.2 drives and the memory uh, chamber here, all you need to do is remove those two screws and this will give you access to the uh, board here where we can slot in two M.2 SSDs here for caching. So this is going to give us that SSD caching, which will uh, significantly uh, boost the storage efficiency for the disk array. So really useful there. There is your 32 gigabytes of RAM on one stick, and that is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 megahertz.
Now this NAS has a super powerful Intel Core i3, eight cores, eight threads, and that is 32 gigabytes of RAM in there. Also two easy to install M.2 SSD caching slots on here. Less noise on this unit of only 21 decibels. And of course the wattage on this is 90 watts for this actual device. It supports uh, transferring data across any operating system, whether it be Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. And I must say, they've really knocked this out of the park with this particular NAS. So these are the M.2 drives. You can use something like this. I'll just quickly show you here. This will just slip into place like so. You hear a click, and then you can screw it down with the screw that is already there at the back. I'm not going to populate these just for this video, but that's basically how you can populate those two bays there for SSD caching. Now, also, you can see this is the operating system USB here that's plugged into the main board. And uh, again, that is a uh, TerraMaster's own operating system that they use. And I must say, this is probably one of the best NASs you can buy right now today in 2024. This is a brand new release from TerraMaster. And if you look here, you've got that ventilation here and also that big heatsink here to keep the components nice and cool. And this also helps uh, cooling this top board here as well. So really nice uh, looking design they've done here. And to slot this back into position, all you need to do here is just offer this to the actual unit itself and need to push forward here a little bit and then you should be able to just slide this into position and repopulate those two screws in the uh, back end there so let me just quickly do that and I just need to put these two screws back in so I'm going to go ahead and do that and once we've done that I'll give you the quick setup process for this it's very simple and easy to do so we've got the drives in now we're just going to add a bit of power and of course we're going to need a ethernet uh, cable here so I'm just going to put a, one of those in there and again, we've got the HDMI and other expansion slots on here, which you can populate as well. You should see when you power it on, you should start seeing a beep noise and some lights flickering here. Just let it stabilize itself and let it find itself on the network. And then we can head over to the PC. And uh, this is where we are. And we're just going to take a quick look at the website. So if you're looking to buy one of these, I'll leave a link in the video description. It's probably one of the best NASs on the market right now. This is not a paid sponsored review. This is just me reviewing a piece of hardware that has been sent for review and I'm giving you my honest opinion. No one is viewing this video before it's released and no one is telling me what to say about this product. I've used TerraMaster NASes for some considerable time since quite a few years ago and I can honestly say they've come on leaps and bounds over the years and it's a good viable option for a lot of people that are looking for a very affordable, powerful NAS, and probably, like I said, one of the most powerful on the market. And if you're talking about reliability, I've been running a NAS on my network for many, many years, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So to set this up, all you need to do here is go to your browser here and type uh, tnas.local and push enter, and it will start to initialize, and it will try and find it on the local network. Once you're happy, just click start, and then it was going to ask you a bunch of questions. It'll say warning, any incompatible desktop hard drives, example, uh, Barracuda or any unworthy uh, drives will fail and it's not advisable to use those drives. So if, as long as you're using the correct drives from their compatible list, you should be fine. Once you've done that, push start. You can use default or custom depending on how experienced you are with NAS. If you are a beginner, go with a default and then click on uh, default here and you will see this warning coming up. It will erase all the data on them drives. So if you've got any data on them drives, don't use those drives because it will erase them. It's going to download the TOS from uh, TerraMaster's web servers. And once it's downloaded, it's going to start to install it onto your NAS and get it ready for you to actually see the operating system for the first time and log in. So I'm going to speed this process up uh, so we can get to the part of seeing the actual desktop. And then you'll be able to uh, make some changes create user accounts and all that stuff. Now you may see something like this saying it's going to restart. That's pretty normal. Just let it do its thing and uh, let it count down and it will restart automatically. And then you're going to see the super user settings, which is for your super user details. So you need to read all the information, very straightforward and easy to do here. What you need to do is give yourself uh, your name, give the device a name. You can leave it default here if you want to, or give it a fancier name to make it more visible on the network. I'm just going to call this home office or something like that. So you can generally see what I would do myself. So put home office here and uh, you can put your username in just like so, and then put your password. Make sure your password's nice and strong. Give an email address, 
accept their terms and conditions and you are now ready to use your NAS and get it set up. So what we need to do here is let it synchronize the storage ball here. So we're just gonna, it's using T-RAID and we're just gonna let that do its thing. It does take a bit of time, depending on how many drives you've got populated in there. Just let that do its thing. And uh, when that's done, uh, you're gonna be able to, to set up your NAS. So you can see here in risk, security advisor this is listed down on the left hand side here this little green shield thing you can go through this and make sure all of these are normal green tick marks like you can see down below there this is important this means that your nas is set up correctly so wait till it's finished its initialization and go through all of those and set all those up so they're nice and uh, secure for yourself and uh, that does take a bit of time and they will tick down and do a few things for you and uh, it's just going to synchronize everything for you. So there's your volume, your storage pool, your hard drives, and you can see the state of your hard drives, whether they're in good health and things like that. Try and use uh, good quality drives uh, and also use known brand drives uh, that are brand new and not used and old and in poor health because you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems. So try and use brand new drives whenever you can when you're setting up a brand new NAS. Going into your application center, this is where all your apps are. And you can uh, download and install as many apps as you like on this device, depending on what you want to use it for. So you've got Iomi Backup here. You've got Centralized Backup here and a bunch of other stuff in here, which is going to be very useful for you. So a media server, a multimedia server here. You've got Surveillance Manager. This is a beta program. This is for your security cameras. So whether it's you want to set up uh, your home security and view and record all of your cameras around your home, onto your NAS you can do. You can also send all of your photos from your phone here on the Terra Photos. You've also got TerraSync client and things like that. USB copy. We've got Docker Manager. You've got Web Server. You've got tons of stuff on here. So it's not just for backing up your data. You can back up your data. You can synchronize your phone to it. You can create your own Plex media server on here for all your home movies or movies and TV shows and stuff like that. You can set up just about anything you want on here, whether you want to run virtual machines and uh, things like that on your NAS. Your NAS will have you covered. And of course, it will be running as a RAID, which means uh, it's going to protect you because you're going to have a redundancy set up. So if one drive fails, your data will be safe. Again, you can also back up your volume on your NAS as well. You've also got your third party apps created by the community. And you can see there's a ton of stuff here. I'm not gonna go through them all, there's absolute pages and pages of them. But if you're interested in something like this and you wanna get a NAS and you've never been too sure about it, it is pretty straightforward to use. Once you get it set up, you can share files. You can access uh, your data anywhere around the world. Uh, you can share files with friends and family. You can even set up your photo albums for all your family and yourself, depending whether they're outside your network, you can set all that up as well. Very simple and easy to do. If you want to see more on the Terra Master, let me know in the comments section below what you would like to see. Whether you want to see a step-by-step -step setup process of it, I'll be happy to make that video for you. It is pretty straightforward, and I can set up user accounts and permissions and things like that. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments section. But I'm just letting this stabilize now and get sorted out, and uh, we can basically end the video. So if you haven't got a NAS yet and you're looking to get one, then look no further because this is probably one of the best ones on the market right now, made by TerraMaster. And uh, I've reviewed quite a few TerraMaster products in the past and uh, they're very affordable and uh, they're very reliable as well. And there's an alternative to some of the other big major brands out there that are a little bit more expensive than, say, the TerraMaster uh, NASs. Now let me quickly show you uh, before I end the video, the users here, you can create users, user groups, and uh, this is where you get access to all of your uh, control panel, which is basically for your storage pool, your hard drives, your virtual disks, uh, hot spare and things like that. You can set all this up here and this is just basically uh, the same for pretty much every NAS. Anyway, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more on this, let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I just want to wish everyone a happy new year and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.